You ever think about quitting? It's the combat of life, hammering the snot out of you. Well, stand by, dig in deep, and get ready to get fired up with us. Welcome to the Team Never Quit Podcast, the number one podcast that inspires you to fight on. I'm your host, David Rutt Rutherford, here with Mr. Never Quit himself, Marcus Luttrell. Our mission is to help you embrace the suck of life, to teach you the values of working your ass off, and to interview the most hard-charging people on planet Earth. We know life is hard. It's time for you to suck it up, buttercup, and let us teach you to persevere in every environment imaginable by sharing real-world lessons learned by those who never quit. That's right. It's time, Marcus, for us to help them defeat the well, negative you're insurgency me up, man. in their you're lives. Fire me up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TNQ Podcast. I'm Marcus Luttrell. As always, my co-host, Rut, Dave Rut Rutherford. Rut? Rut? Hey, uh, buddy, it's just you and me. Rutherford's still on vacation. Still on vacation. <laughs> yeah. That's all right, man. It's about time we got you out here. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, man. <laughs> I've been wanting you to get off my that computer, or at least have a microphone for a long time, yeah. so... I'm fired up. You're out here today. Well, we're about to test. You. Yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> it, 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 this this might run. Uh, this might be like a, a tricycle with two wheels. But uh, <laughs> if we get the proper lean. It'll ride just fine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, we got uh, we got a very interesting guest today, um, John Rezig. Rezig. I'm pronouncing that correct, right? Yeah, this you got is it. your buddy. Yeah, you got it. Hey, yeah. don't worry, brother. No one can butcher your name more than I can. So. Oh no! I, I know someone. He's on vacation. <laughs> this is his chair. He can't butcher your name, can he? Oh God dang! What was that? That's, I, there's been some. Now that you bring that up, there was one. We remember we were both kind of like, just what it's, was? It's the record stop <laughs> kind of thing. Like, er, what? You fouled that up so much, it almost made sense. <laughs> it's how it could be something totally different. That was so horrible. You sounded like you did that on purpose. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he is doing that on. It's a word of the day. Maybe he is paper. doing that on purpose. Could be, man. That they. That's part of his style, man. That's why he's so good. He rocked that microphone, that energy, man. He brings you from all directions. Yeah, uh, let's let's not ignore the fact that he is. Uh, he's the driving force around oh, here. So man. we're gonna try to. We got a really interesting guest coming on, and we're gonna do our best for you. So you stick with us, and we'll uh, we'll try to make this a great show. So how uh, how do you know uh, how do you know him? Okay, this is a pretty good story. I uh, I found out about well the chive right in the teams the chive started sure. pounding sure. around it, but we didn't know who I didn't know who came up with it. You don't really care when you're you no, know, you just care about the chive. Of course you, know. <laughs> you care about the content. Yeah. And for for those who are not aware, the chive, uh, world's largest entertainment website, we're talking about twenty million viewers a month, um, which equates to more monthly viewers than NPR or USA Today or Comedy Central or Disney. So I kind of like the modern day, we're talking uh, about the, a the, massive the, the next internet kind of presence. Deal, man. He, he, with the... Yeah, him and his brother. The Chivez. Yeah, his, man. It's a family brother. thing. That's the, the beautiful part about it, man, is all... He's got his kin in there in the shot running it. We go... Melly and I go down there and visit him, man. And it's, it's great. It's a great environment, too. The, the shot. Yeah, they, and what they do is uh, basically, from my understanding of it, I'm not a... I believe what they call a chiver, one of the frequent visitors you are, to the you site. Are now. I guess I maybe I will be, yeah. but uh, it, it's a content. It's basically content aggregation, and they have all these, you know, uh, from from all sorts of different categories uh, of information. But they put it up there, and it's I don't all know, you it, need it's, to it's know to be a fan of those, this It's joker? a classic <laughs> surf yeah, yeah. site, yeah. you know. Is he a, a they are a huge fan of the military, and they are a huge fan of women. Boom! Right there. <laughs> That's the two main deals. The Military women portion and women. of that is definitely probably why it came oh, up on huge, our visibility man. as far as the teams is concerned originally. Absolutely. Anyway, the story you were how you met him. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, it was when Governor Perry was running for president, and we had jumped <laughs> on this. Uh, we were in uh, where were we at? Man, we were. I think we were flying out of Austin or somewhere, and we had jumped uh -huh. on this plane. Well, he had uh, Governor Perry was riding on uh, Southwest, but he put all of us on this. Uh, Perry was riding on 
Oh yeah, Southwest. Southwest. That's how he rolls, man. He doesn't roll private. He flies Southwest. Him, him. He flies Southwest. All right, this cat, this kid right here, he flies United. That's amazing. Yeah, so he flies Southwest. But we're we're on this bird. It's me and Paul and Mojo, Mike Thornton, Mikey T's on there. Our metal, nice. all right. So we had, yeah. And um, and then this guy comes bebopping on the plane. He had a he had a man bag on, like an Indiana Indiana uh-huh. Jones wears one. My brother wears one now. He's a scientist. No, he doesn't. Does he really? I know, right? Really? <laughs> Like Jack, uh, Jack. Well, what's the guy from the TV show Twenty Four? Jack, Jack. Uh, that character, man bag, not Reacher, man bag. It's like the tactical man bag. Bowers, Jack Bowers, Jack, Jack Burton is my hero, right? <laughs> Jack Burton is a team guy hero. <laughs> then we got Jack Bauer is a civilian hero. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anywho. All right. So he comes on. He parks anyway. himself right next to us. I mean, in, into the, uh, okay. which is not that hard on that plane. But, uh-huh. and we're like, hey, what's up? And he's like, hey, you know, what's up? We didn't say, I had no idea who he was. And he had no idea uh, who we, we what all he, were. Of the plane he stepped onto. It was all team guys. And he just kind of the whole flight, man. He didn't really say anything. He was talking to, uh, I can't remember now. And we landed and he had to go do something for the chive. And we didn't know that. And we all, Went in in a, in a different direction. We were sitting down at lunch, and I walk up to a rancher. He finally got there. I was like, "Hey, man, what's somebody on our plane I didn't recognize?" Uh, I kind of described him. He's like, oh, "That's John." I was like, "What's what's he do?" He goes, "Man, he he developed the chive." And every team guy goes, <laughs> <laughs> "Exactly right." <laughs> I mean, the look on our faces. Oh, nobody knew that. I just right? missed that just opportunity. Kinda, oh man, we thought we totally. That up, Man, that's, a, that's the same thing. The first time I met Matt Best, I was actually overseas working. Really? Yeah. No idea who he was. I was only familiar with the whole, what is it, Navy SEAL versus oh, Marine, all those rap yeah, battles. Those are great. That's right? the time I saw him too. Somehow, I get on this topic, talking to this guy that I just met, don't know who he is, and this comes up, and I mention these rap battles. So I'm there talking about the rap battles with the creator, and I have no idea. With the battler? And eventually <laughs> I go, because <laughs> it's been a long time. I, right, maybe, sure. you know, maybe he was bearded up, and I, it, for some reason I didn't recognize him. And uh, then he lets me know, oh, I'm, I'm at best the guy who created those. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Same kind of thing. Anyway, John Resig. We got him coming on. He, uh, the Chive, he's also... Let's see. He's also an actor. Um, he's been in True Blood, Deputy Kevin Ellis, for like eight seasons. Uh, something called Leverage. It's good. Leverage is good. Yeah, I've not watched it. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. I, but yeah, let me tell you something. You know how you know he's a cool dude? Because mm. Bill Murray hangs out with him. <laughs> Bill Murray's probably one of the coolest men on the planet, right? I, I mean, if you walk up, it's like, Bill, man, I, God dang, you just... You're so cool. They just put your face on a T-shirt, and everyone knows who you are. Like most of the superstars, they have the one style. one name, right? right? They lose the last name. They're so popular, they just go by their first name. <laughs> They'll just put this, Murray. This, this is face Murray. I mean, yeah. So we eventually linked back up with him and uh-huh. made a point to say, "Hey, you know, remember this face." And then we uh, we swapped numbers and uh, running into each other and, and and doing doing a lot of charity stuff together man they, these guys yeah. i'm telling you man the way they support yeah, that's the a military, big thing that they're doing now on the chive uh, god dang it's God's unbelievable charities. yeah for something to step yeah. up somebody to step up they don't have to do that no and they're raising an incredible amount of money for all sorts of local charities Awareness, uh, individual everything people. they do we'll talk to them about that yeah it's just is on the level man it seems like the the more successful they get the more they give it's a, it's a community is what they've yeah. turned the chive into. It's, it's like a community. And then out of that, I think they probably realized, hey, we can, we can be making a positive impact with this. Um, so oh, how many did. different ways have you seen the keep, keep calm and chive on? Excuse me. Redone. Oh, sure. I mean, it's everywhere. Not just on T-shirts. You see on stickers and, and everything has changed that moniker around to... Yeah, I mean, if, if you're not, uh, if people aren't familiar, there's there's two, I guess, two primary T-shirts that really, and selling these T-shirts, part of their community, the Chive and all that, two primary T-shirt designs that really kind of uh, came out as they were, as they were becoming, you know, they were growing rapidly. One was a Bill Murray T-shirt with a picture of Bill Murray we already talked about. And the second was kind of a play on the original World War II England, keep calm, carry on. And it, these days it's become, uh, that's so popular, it's everywhere. Well, they were one of the original, I don't know, perhaps one of the original uh, reinventions or, or retooling of that phrase, uh, and they turned it into keep calm and chive on. Right. 
Do you know, I think the bill, what was the, what's the, the little drawing you would see? It's three fingers and the nose and the, <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All, I, in the old wars, you'd see I that. I have every, no idea. He has a name. He does? Oh my God. Yeah, he does. He has a name and people are going to burn us for not knowing it. And when I say it, you'll be like, oh, oh, absolutely. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go look it up and then we're going to edit this. So it sounds like we know what we're talking about. That's a good idea. That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's why it's so wonderful having you back. Um, well, hey, you know what? We, uh, we're actually a couple minutes late to call John. So all right. what do you say we get after it? Yeah, I, man, we've said enough about him. Let's get him on here. Let's and see what and the hell he's got to say. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Team Never Quit podcast. I'm Marcus Luttrell, and today we're honored to have the wizard out from behind the screen and, and uh, in front of the microphone. Wizard? Sir. I've been waiting for this. Yep. This is going to be fun, man, especially... We'll see. With the guy... <laughs> yeah, this could go either way, I guess, what? man. But uh, the, the great part about it, man, is is the guy we have on, because I'm actually buddies with him. We've known each other for a while, and he, he is the, the entrepreneur, man, and mm -hmm. just a philanthropist, and, and from... The way he started to where he is now, I man, it's one of those amazing things. And he's that, you know, when you hear me talk about you stand around a guy and just learn stuff by the way they move and the way they talk to people, mm -hmm. he's one of those, man. So I, I'll be interested in hearing how many different different stories he has to uh, that are going to resonate with our audience. So. Yeah, I'm excited to hear what he has to say. The, the guy um, has uh, an incredible amount of social influence, or at least the people that uh, his, his, his site reaches is tremendous, and it's still growing. Um, Absolutely. Let's get him on here, won't you? Yeah, man. John, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing much better now. Can you guys introduce me to my parents? Because that would be really nice. That was the greatest intro <laughs> I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and I, was, I, I was walking down the street in uh, Missouri. Or something. Where's the, the baseball? The uh, Louisville. And I ran into one. Of his, this dude was walking down the street, had a chive shirt on. I was like, excuse me, sir. I go, this is going to sound completely weird, but you mind if I get a picture with you? I was like, my buddy actually has some, something to do. Yeah, something to do Something with to it. do with the chive. I kind of, I, I like, think. And he didn't know who I was, and I kind of, he's like, oh, sure. And right after we finished, he goes, the guy uh, who, who developed this is my nephew. <laughs> the man who developed this is a great man. That was your uncle, right? Tyler Durden. Yeah. yeah. That was my uncle. I heard was the uncle. flip side of you that conversation. My uncle calls me, and he's like, he's like John, you're never going to believe this, but Marcus Luttrell stopped me on the street and asked to take a picture with me. And I was like, oh. no, he didn't. <laughs> what an incredible coincidence. <laughs> yeah, that's sure. Oh, man, well, hey, I mean, what if I've been like, oh, you need to take that shirt off, dude's trash. You know what I mean? I <laughs> <laughs> you made his life. He still tells that story to this day, and nobody believes him. I'm so glad we've got this on record now, because he's going to play this for all his awesome. friends. Oh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, and there was a couple of us. I was down there getting a the baseball for Axe, and... Um, I was like, oh, I got to do this. Hold on, man. And I walked around to him. I was like, sir. And I was in short sleeve shirt. I was like, I know this. Man, I look, I, this could be, this is not, I'm not trying to sell you any I'm drugs. Not trying to attack, <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to attack I'm, you or I'm anything. I'm not going like that. to accost you. Yeah. I just uh, need to get a picture of you in that shirt. <laughs> he took like three steps back, <laughs> got into a low crouch, and prepared to evade. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Well, all right, brother. Now that we got you on the show, man, we're going to kick this thing off. What we like. We got the mad minute. Basically, what that is is a few questions we're going to fire at you to get the uh, the mind working. And it's, uh, trust me, a lot of people, when you say we're going to fire mad minute questions at you, they, they think they know what the, to expect, but you're not going to have any idea, man. No. This is, uh, we're going to try to blindside so, you. Wizard, you want to fire the first one at him? Yeah. To kick this off, let's see. Who would you rather go on a week long road trip with, Billy Mays or Richard Simmons? Uh, Richard Simmons. Why? Because he's stuck in his house, uh, I hear right I now. know, right? And, I, was, uh, I don't want really? to see him in six weeks or six three years. years or something. And I, uh, three years. I, I think, uh, I think I'd, yeah, I'd like to, to rescue Richard Simmons. Man, that's, that's a great answer. That's Because somebody, I forget. Wow. Like, I, I didn't even when, know Actually, that. when you and I were talking, right when you broke your leg, somebody had said, man, yeah. poor, poor Rich, man, he's, he's locked down. Yeah, you know, talk about a and, and he could he could nurse me back to health like I, I, you know. I, yeah, I, I I take Dick Simmons. Great point, man. You got there and sweat to the oldies. Awesome. Get that knee running right. Answer. All right, favorite All right. superhero. <laughs> oh man, you're gonna hate me, Aquaman. Next, good. If I wasn't such a huge Spider-Man fan, Aquaman's up there, dude. Hey, Warrior from the Deep, baby, not okay. Oh. 
<laughs> nice. Only All with right. the Navy SEAL is an acceptable answer. I'm, right. I'm happy. That's why I do that. There. Right. Go ahead. right. All right. If you could be president for a day, give us one thing you would do. Well, I, I like Kennedy, so I'd probably just uh, lay on my back and uh, have sex with as many supermodels as I could all day. I mean, I would, I would, I would royally uh, abuse power. Uh, yeah, everybody everybody, everybody would have to wear a chive shirt that day too. Yeah, they, oh, like, of course, just to satisfy the vanity of both <laughs> my owning the chive and being president. Yep. That's a very right? honest answer. I, I appreciate. I've been that. waiting. Remember, because I was like, "Come on, man, president for a day limit." <laughs> No, you got to do something crazy. Pass, mm-hmm. uh, term limits, or maybe um, raise uh, import taxes to decrease the trade deficit. Negative. Yep. Remember Matt Best answer? No. <laughs> Cause an inter- international incident by yeah. sleeping with uh, Putin's wife. <laughs> he did Another say that. Another honest didn't he? answer. <laughs> we like that. Hit, hit, All right. hit him, brother. All right, first car. Uh, 1987 Chrysler LeBaron. A LeBaron. Was it a convertible two door or? No, it wasn't a convertible, but I wanted it to be so bad that I had my dad install a sunroof on it, you know, and we did it the real white trash way because I'm part white trash. Sure. So, I mean, you're talking about like all. cutting a hole in the ceiling. So it leaked. Going yeah. and getting a real crappy <laughs> exactly. sunroof. You know, you get the idea. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. it a sunroof or a moonroof? There is a difference. Uh, the <laughs> the moonroof is nothing but a, a window in the ceiling. <laughs> a sunroof mm-hmm. opens and closes. This is a hybrid moonroof sunroof because it was bigger than it should have been and it shouldn't <laughs> open, but it did. Um, it's a white trash yeah. version of a sun moon. It's more of a <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was too hot and, the, and, and, it, and it, it, it swelled up so it wouldn't open, then it was a moonroof. All right, favorite movie. <laughs> I only know that because it happened to me. <laughs> hey, hey, stand by. Wait, I, I, got, I got a good one for him. All right. Who would you rather have as a father in law? Hannibal Lecter? Or the Emperor from Star Wars? No doubt Hannibal Lecter. He could teach me how to get away with murder and play the piano I, very I, well. Highly educated. And culture. He's just cultured. Yeah. yeah. The Emperor was just kind of yeah. mean. He was a senator, though. <laughs> All right, favorite, <laughs> favorite movie character you like to play out in real life? Oh, God. This is bad, but Forrest Gump. You know, I got asked. He was Especially man. these days, now that I'm crippled, I put on my shoes. And I'm like, you know, someone's like, oh, you know, how are you doing? I'm like, these are my walking shoes. You know, like I'm, <laughs> I basically am Forrest. Guys. Forrest was a man of the people. He's a war hero. Played football. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is a great. You know, movie. he eventually got the girl, and then she died. And she died. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God. All right, was There's a lot of last... deeper questions that can be asked from the that movie and the point of that movie, but we're definitely not going to go there right now. All right, let's see one more. How about, okay, semi-serious question. Actually, serious question. What is your greatest failure? Oh, God, there have been so many of them. But I would say uh, we threw a music festival three years ago called Chai Fest. And it... Mm-hmm cost me about five million dollars and it was in four different cities like seattle denver chicago things like that and Mm. we we went in knowing it probably wasn't going to make money but it was going to be one of the most spectacular failures in 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 the history of 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 music festivals and it was but but imagine like but we could do whatever we wanted right because it's like you know there's tens of thousands of people going and I owned it and we could go anywhere and do anything. So imagine like the father of the bride on wedding day, who just mm-hmm. doesn't give a shit about anything. Yeah. Like I was hopping over the concession stands and just putting my mouth on the beer taps while people <laughs> looked at me like, what is wrong with this kid? So I, yeah, I lost three and a half million dollars in a course of 60 days. And, and, uh, that was, that was great. But at one point I remember we had paid, uh, the city of Chicago, $250,000 to put up a firework display <laughs> over <laughs> Lake Michigan. Um, and I had, I had said that I wanted a red, a big red button, you, you know, Marcus, like a launch button, yep. you know, yeah. um, to set, to set it off. <laughs> and uh, and uh, nice. at the end of it, you know, the, the, 
the last bands playing the song, you know, and, and they're getting everybody jazzed into it. You know, there's 20,000 people bouncing up and down and somebody uh, dressed as waiter walked up to me with a, a red button on a, on a silver platter and I hit it and <laughs> launched this absolutely <laughs> fuck off fireworks display over Lake Michigan. Are you um, saying that um, wasn't worth $3.25 million? I'm saying sometimes, sometimes failure and success are just stays of great. I was about to say, out. man, <laughs> <laughs> what you did mind. was, is through all, man, you threw yourself a rock party, right? You threw yourself <laughs> right. a concert a that you went to, and when you wanted a beer, yeah. you jump over the counter and get yourself a beer. I mean, I don't, I, I get it uh, monetarily. It was, you look at it as a failure, but. It, failure, though. I mean, it, I would look at you just threw yourself a party and had a great time. Yeah, it sounds like a matter of perspective to me. You so. had to say it was a failure to everybody else because we lost money, right? <laughs> a, a lot of money. And, and my business partners were both going, like, Leo, Leo, my brother, was having a kid at the time, so he didn't get to go to any of them. So he's real sure. far hurt yeah, about yeah, the whole yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, it was hit and miss. Good time, though. <laughs> All right, all right. That's the mad minute, brother. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks for doing that, man. Like I said, man, we, we pull those out of everywhere and uh, and, and get the old <laughs> mental juices flowing. So what what we're gonna do, man? We're gonna get into the meat potatoes and why people come here. Like I said, we bring amazing people on here to tell their greatest never quit stories, uh, their adversity, mm -hmm. and how they get through it, man. And we we connect you guys to everybody out there who might be going through a, a similar situation or a different situation and uh, just need different kinds of motivation. So. I couldn't think of anybody better than you to, to do that. So if you would, man, if you want to, just yeah. get into your greatest never quit story, brother. Uh, there's, a, there's really one that always comes to mind, and that is the story of how the, the chive became successful or became what it is today. And a lot of people don't know that the chive was very successful out of the gate. Like we had created a bunch of websites that failed before we created the chive. But when we created the chive, relatively out of the gates, it was, it had traction and we knew we had it, mm. but we were very, very poor. Um, my brother and I had come from Indiana. We both had a lot of college debt. I remember I had $17,000 in college debt and uh, that was like insurmountable amounts of money for me. I didn't think I could overcome that. And suddenly, a lot of people are on the chive and what you, the, the unintended consequence of this is that your hosting bills are racking up, right? So you, you've got to pay to serve the mm -hmm. fight for that many people. Handle your traffic. Uh, and we're serving out. Oh, really? Exactly. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, there were a number of agencies that you could pay to host your website, your domain, and, and it, it costs money, especially with all the heavy photos. You know, we're serving out huge photo galleries to millions of people to the day. So what mm -hmm. happens is like you get a bill in the mail, right? And imagine like they're, we're already broke the joke. Okay. Like, uh, we're so broke. In fact, the five people who found in the chive, we're living in a three bedroom house in Rose Avenue, um, in Venice beach. And we would all throw in like $2 every day to go to Taco Bell and get bean burritos. Cause bean burritos are 99 cents and beef burritos were a dollar nine and we could not afford the dollar oh nine. Wow. Um, to, so we, that's what we were eating. And then our first hosting bill came and I think it was like $42,000. Oh my God. That's more month. serious than I had expected. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So we're looking at like, that's like, it was like a joke. There was more zeros than I'd ever seen. And we we're, you know, we're like faced with the idea that we had this successful idea, but we're going to have to one of two things, either shut it down or do what happens to everyone else. And that is sell it to somebody. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and the venture capitalists were circling immediately, like just hounding us with offers because they knew we were broke. Um, mm -hmm. and Leo and I, the whole reason we got into the game was to quit our day job. We didn't want to be employees of anyone. So we were in a matter of months going from being employees of, I was working at a singular wireless at like a kiosk. No kidding, like never work at a kiosk at a mall. <laughs> You're like treated like a subhuman. <laughs> and then my, bro <laughs> my brother's doing something else and 
Like, <laughs> holy cow, like, try, if, I'm going to make my kids work at a kiosk at the mall for one week and they'll come back with a real profound sense of respect for their <laughs> I got it. Roger that. I got so, it. I get it. Yeah. So we, we were like, Oh God, what are we going to do um, with this toasting bill? And the next month came and it was more 47,000. So suddenly we're hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and we're begging Gator hosting to just keep us live and we'll figure out a way to pay it off. Um, so we're back to rent. We got red on our ledger. And in the meantime, these venture capitalists had come in and the offer at the time was like 2 million bucks. Um, and it seems really weird at the time because everyone's like, oh, you know, 2 million bucks to you guys, whatever. But mm-hmm. to us at the time who couldn't afford a bean burrito or a beef burrito, um, we, that was like my brother and I would become millionaires, right? And we, all we had mm-hmm. to do was sign on the dotted line and the venture capitalists would own 50% of the chive and, the tribe, as you know, it today would have never existed. They didn't like the women on the site and they didn't understand why we were doing charity. You get mm, the idea. And absolutely. we would have been employees and we wanted our freedom. Like freedom is the most important thing to anybody in their twenties. If you're in your twenties and you don't want to work for the man, you want to, some people want their independence. So what we did was we still had no answers but photocopiers and fax was still, you could still fax things, you know, back in 2008. And so we photocopied our middle fingers and we <laughs> faxed them to all the venture capitalists that were trying to <laughs> buy the chive. You think that was a clear message? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I had another good we, point across. Did, like a, did you hear, get the point? A jester, yeah. Yeah, we didn't hear from a single one of them. That, I mean, it was a real bull. I mean, it's, I'm not proud of that, but, um, so we faxed our middle fingers to like 10 different, uh, venture capitalists. And then we had an idea that we would put you know, Bill Murray's face on a t-shirt and try to set up an e-com shop to pay off the bills. That would have been um, my first at thought. The time. I would have said, right? I'm, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, completely broke. And I'm going to get out of this by, I'm going to put Bill Murray on a t-shirt. <laughs> it's so obvious. It's so simple. It's That's seemed, like one of those moments. It's, 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 it's like the, the, the simplicity, the, the clarity, like the angel comes to you, right? In the form <laughs> the of Bill Lord. Murray. Yes. I Lord. mean, were you watching? Were you watching Ghostbusters? Or something? Just, all of a sudden, he pops in there because every time I think of Bill Murray, I get positive. No, it's it's so true. And we and at the same time, we we printed "Keep Calm" and "Chive On" on a T-shirt, and we set up this little mom and pop shop called the Chivery. Um, that we thought, okay, we'll, we'll make just enough money to be able to, to pay the rent and keep the lights on if we're lucky. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we print up like 400 t-shirts at a local t-shirt shop called the Ave on the, and shout out to the Ave and Windward Circle. And they printed them up and we thought, oh, we'll sell these t-shirts over the next two months and that'll make like $6,000 and we'll, it'll keep us going. And then we put the shirts on sale and they all sold out in like 30 seconds and we all looked at each other like what someone checked the numbers wow. again like is this for real no worry. we couldn't so suddenly we're running all over los angeles finding black blanks black blank t-shirts because we didn't know where to get them and we were running them to the af who had those little laser jet t-shirt <sighs> printers and they were just printing these bill murray shirts and these keep calm shirts as fast as they could they ended up shutting down the whole store to anyone else. And we would just wow. print those all day and mail them out at the end of the day. And, you know, it, within, and we made like $1.9 million, I guess, in a few months of that and say, and really saved the company from, from certain doom or ownership. That's incredible. So, yeah. yeah. Incredible. That's a great point. When you're, when you, if you're out there, if you're in your twenties, I mean, that's, that's that age you're out there to make mistakes. I mean, you, you, you got to get out there and try and find your way. You, you know just enough not to know anything. I mean, everything we teach, you get taught mm. in school and everything is, is just that. You, I mean, you're taught it. To apply yep. it, you have to go out and actually put the rubber on the road. And it's different for every person. Everybody can learn the same thing, but to apply it is, is completely different. And then I think in your 30s, you're out there making your way, right? You find your purpose through your mistakes and you, and you learn your lessons. And then, man, at, you get to the 40s and it's, it's – that's. Uh, 
I mean, I know I'm there, and that's when those come together, and you, you get that fulfillment in life. Because we didn't think we'd live to see it, my brother and I. Mm. So you take everything you've learned through the, its entirety and, and apply it and step off and and really start going. And the thing about it, when you're talking about a dollar oh nine for a, a burrito, my brother and I had that same thing. It was thirty two cents for hush puppies. We'd find it in the parking lots at, at our college. We'd go out and and scrounge for change to go eat lunch. And if you're out there scrounging for change to go eat at fast food for a dollar oh nine and thirty two cents, you're on the right path. Yeah, John's the second one I've heard <laughs> having were, to go through that crap. You are right in the yeah. middle of you're right where you need to be. Noted that yeah. Yeah, Marcus and his brother also were fighting alligators at the time. So, you know, don't take everything Man, says, you get you so, know, face value. Just, <laughs> you get so pissed off eating <laughs> hush puppies every day, you want to go find an alligator. I don't, I actually don't know this story, so let's have it. <sighs> Which one, the alligator? Yeah. Oh, we used to, that's different all together. As kids, me and my, for... our crew would go down to the river at night, run the rivers and jump and wrestle alligators. It was stupid. <sighs> Whatever. You see my brother's hand, that big scars he had? He jumped on one that was a lot bigger than we thought because his tail was into the marsh and the, his nose was in these reeds, so you could only see half his snout and half his. You measure the distance from. Anyway, this is some <laughs> redneck. So no, no, God. keep going. No, no, yes, don't finish the story. Anyway, yeah, in the middle of fighting an alligator. Jumped on that alligator, Did man. It jump on him. the back of an alligator. Yeah, yeah we're and, looking for technique, man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you don't want to go head to head. No, walk us especially through, especially in the water. Yeah, you just sneak up, jump on their back, man, and. Um, it's the most powerful animal you've ever experienced in your entire life, man. Any, any predator. God dang, I had a hold of a shark one time. It was about as long as my arm, and I had it. I was face to face with it, and he slipped out of one of my hands, and I had the I had him by the tail. He drug me around that boat, around the boat before I, I, I could get him you. out of there, and he wasn't even a foot long. I mean, just the power of these things. Anyways, back to the alligator. Yeah, it was a, it was a bad day, man. Morgan got his ass handed to him. You. Do you have to roll the alligator? So what do you do when you're no, on the what, back what, of an alligator? Because we're bigger. You jump on them smaller than you. Hopefully. Is this kind of like a rodeo ride? You get on for a certain number, oh, yeah. you know, eight you get seconds, and, and you're off. And trap his jaw and get him up under there and pick him up. All right. Once you float them over on their back, man, they're pretty much helpless. And then you just kind of get out. It's, it's there's no oh, so it's end catch game and release. in this. Yeah, it's, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch and release with what the planet has left of a dinosaur. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Good way of looking at that, actually. <laughs> What uh? What were we talking? How the hell about? did we get on wrestling? At? Oh, John threw that oh, on me. Chive. Uh, who, who's our guest? <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're to your point that you didn't think you'd live to see your thirties in more ways than one. There you, go. you almost didn't. So, you know, congrats. Uh, let's all congrats to Marcus Luttrell on just being alive. No, uh, yeah. Fighting. You're doing an yeah, excellent fighting job. Fighting alligators. I, 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 I called you when I got. Did. I got hit by lightning the other day. Did I tell you that? I told you that, I think. <laughs> what? Dude. That's true. It's, it's true. Uh, true story. <laughs> Hold on. What? I, I told you that, I thought, last time we were together. I was down at the pond. No, you didn't tell yeah. me you got hit by lightning, Marcus. <laughs> I was down at the pond uh, pushing that river, river rock that I had delivered down there, and the storm was rolling in, and I didn't, I didn't leave fast enough. I felt the static electricity in the pond, so I took off running, oh. but then it came down, and hit this tree and by the time i turned around man that it had started to uh, jump over the ground and it hit me and <laughs> knocked me into this trash can knocked me out caught me on fire actually because i had dropped down <clears throat> into a squat position and when i came to <laughs> i ran upstairs and all the electronics in the house had been blown out and i was like hey are you okay uh tia was up there and i was like are you all right is everything all right and she's like yeah i think the electric she's like what's that smell something's on fire i was like it's all right it's me <laughs> I have this crazy. Look he's, at my he's, he's looking like uh, the, the Terminator in the very beginning of the first movie, where he he, he spawns into the world, right? My, and he's my, naked and smoking. Yeah. That's my, that's probably that's how you arrived upstairs, my, right? My teeth were floating a little bit. My hands were really numb, but I had this crazy. Uh, all, my my beard is gray now in this in this crazy jagged uh, formation. It's really disgusting, but that's why I shave it. That's from being hit by lightning. Yeah, you got hit by yeah, lightning. Burned and it, my... honestly, it is. It explains a lot, Marcus. It, I know. You should introduce everyone. That way, that the way you kind of slow talk people, you know, you should just introduce yourself as a guy who got hit by lightning, and then you get a little more compassion. Lead with I that. Think. Hey, you know, a lot of people get hit I, by lightning, man. It happens all the time. No big deal. But hey, no, we're getting <laughs> off topic here, man. I, oh, we're so far off topic. Oh, here. But no, what yeah. he what 
back to the point, man, it doesn't, if you're out there and you're scrounging, you're supposed to be scrounging around. Uh, in our, in our mm-hmm. family, we have a saying, man, everyone is in a hurry to get out of college and go make a million dollars, man. We, you go out and make a million memories and you save a dollar from each, right? And then at the end of it, you have mm-hmm. enough experience and memories. And then you go back with the money that you made and you relive all those wonderful memories you saved a dollar from. I dig that. That's what I do. And I, I mean, that's kind of what anybody who loves what they do didn't give up. And then that not giving up, right? Those venture capitalists throwing money at you. People see that and, and eventually automatically give up on what they're trying to accomplish because they think the end game or the end goal is the money. And it's not, it's what you're trying to, to, to accomplish, to build, to let you know you're alive. The money doesn't. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I call it mm. the, the flop around principle. That was the advice I got when I moved out to L.A. And I didn't understand at the time. The guy's like, look, just just flop around a little bit because, you, you know, you don't you got to you don't even know what you want in life. And that's what that's what your 20s are for. And everybody's different. But, you know, you got to be a, a lot of these venture capitalists, a lot of these guys. I'm not a huge fan of really <sighs> of like really rich old people. Um, cause I, I, a lot of them have lost the dream. You know, they, they see life as a, a graph or the, that's up and to the right is numbers, mm-hmm. you know? And I always thought the, the, the chive itself was a pulse, not a pixel, you know, like we never, mm-hmm. when we got our first million visitor day, um, in 2009, we, we kind of stopped keeping track. Uh, now, th- th- you would think that that's ridiculous, but when you're too focused on the numbers and not just being uh, creative and having fun and flopping around, mm-hmm. then you're not going to get anywhere. The numbers aren't going to go up into the right. So we, I still, to this day, couldn't tell you how many people come to the chive every month. I, I could give a shit, you know? I, I want to know that the people that are coming are just having a good time. That's all. Absolutely. You've built something that doesn't revolve around the numbers. It revolves around the people that go to it. I mean, it's a community now. People know each other as that. They, 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 yeah, you have to. That was when we made those Bill Murray shirts. We didn't just make the shirts. We thought, well, if so many people are going to buy the shirts, right? Then if you see someone else wearing a Keep Calm shirt or a Bill Murray, you have to nod your head or buy them a beer at the bar or give them a ra- random act of kindness. So the idea of the community came from the t-shirts, from this accident, this let's put Bill Murray's face on that. Yeah, sure, that's a great idea. That'll save everything. Well, it just didn't stop there. You, you know, one success begets another, and you, you got to see the opportunity in the moment, too. Once you do experience that a little measure of success, you've got to be able to parlay that into other avenues of success. And for us, success didn't mean money it meant building a community and the money would come later if we could build a community. So we use the shirts to do that too. Um, and that's, you know, and then we saw that the military was buying, uh, over 50% of the shirt sales were going to Afghanistan, to Iraq, to wives of uh, certain active duty men and women who were sending it to their husbands. So we're outfitting the military now with Bill Murray shirts. That, which is a really heady experience. And then that imbued loyalty for the military into the chive, you know, and then mm-hmm. continued to build the idea of the community, which you cannot put a dollar sign on even today because you can't, first of all, you can't buy the chive. It's not for sale at, at any cost. How do you put a dollar sign on the community? You can't. Well, you know, what's really interesting is how, how y'all have gone and I don't know what you, you know, what y'all's attitude was when you originally started it. Uh, but I doubt you were thinking, you know, someday we'll have a community and what we'll do is then turn this into a positive force where we're raising money for charities and individual people who need it. But at what point did you start, did you say to yourself, you know, we can activate, we can really activate our community and do something positive. It's a really good question. Uh, again, we're, we're too st- Stupid for that to have been uh, uh, intentional. What happened was there was a volunteer firefighter in Fluvanna County, Virginia, named Kenny George. And I, he emailed me one night in 2009, and the chive is the three H's, okay? It's humor, hotness, and humanity. But at the time, it was just humor and hotness, okay? Mm-hmm. The humanity came when this guy named Kenny George, who's a volunteer firefighter, emailed me and said, 
Uh, we lost government funding to our volunteer fire department. You guys seem to have this community happening here. Uh, if we don't get like $25,000 by the end of the week, they're going to shut us down. And I wrote him back and I was like, man, I, I don't know how we could help you. I don't, but I'll try, you know, I'll, I'll write this story on mm -hmm. how the, you know, they, and this fire department saves a lot of people in the hill country and uh, in Virginia, which Marcus, you know about this. It, it's here right. in the back hill country of Virginia. These are very noble people. They're not, they don't want anything from you. They don't want to ask. They want to pay their bills. Um, but sometimes they need some help, so they would get it from the volunteer fire department. So we knew that lives were actually going to be lost if they went away. And the government mm -hmm. didn't know that because it's more of a cultural thing. These are prideful people. And mm -hmm. um, so, they, uh, so I said, I'll do it. And I wrote up this story and went to the Chai community and said, I, I don't know if we're, you guys are going to do anything about this. But I think maybe we should help this guy. And we raised like $35,000 in just a couple hours. Uh, and save the fire department. We raised so much money. Now it's one of the, their preeminent fire departments in Virginia. They built a new structure and it's great. And Kenny's uh, still doing great. But that was a moment again, back to, you know, you got to recognize the moment. Like I was like, Oh, oh. so these are good people. These are uh, my community's kind. They're not like anyone else on the internet. That's full of hate and vitriol and all that. These are nice people. Well, let's do it again. You know? And then that's yeah. how the, Charity story. Well, that everything evolves when you're successful, like you guys are. And, the, and, and, and there's no way that it, it doesn't reciprocate. I mean, the harder you try to help people, the hard, the, the more people are going to come in and see that to help you. It, it, it's community, it's family, it's what this country was founded on. Exactly what you're doing, man. Good job. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And my, you know, I founded the chive with my brother, and my two sisters founded the Barry. And the first two hires were Rick Phillip, who runs the military arm to this day, and Bob Phillip the head editor who was also my cousin so we re were real family and you got to lean on them in the hard times and every family does it in different ways it'll be one of the great honors of my life to have started the chive with my brother leo and my cousins and you know and the way you communicate when the chips are down or not like you communicate when it's business and it's certainly not the way like if you ever heard morgan and marcus communicate with each other it's, just, it's a series of grunts okay they just grunt back and forth mm. to each other but you know <laughs> they're getting shit done you don't know what it means but you know they do shorthand uh, it's called shorthand so when you're around somebody long enough you don't have to go out with the whole <laughs> sentences you just it's the look you, yeah i know we're good <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I want to, you know what, from, from talking about that, I, I want to ask you, there's apparently, because right, you've already mentioned three separate, like, unexpected successes. First was just the success of the site. Second, the, uh, the, the, the merchandising, you know, with the, with the t-shirts just took off. The unexpected success with the charity, what, is there, is there like, uh, would you say there's like some kind of core, core element that is the, the core component for, you know, how well everything's gone for you? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think you've got to be a constant tinkerer. You know, everything comes from, you know, everything we've talked about today, even right down to Chai Fest was we're always coming up with ideas, right? And we have to, you, as an entrepreneur, you, you, you feel compelled to move forward with the ideas, whether they fail or not, because most of the time, they may break your way. And so we had a series of failures, like with Chai Fest. I think the beer line did okay. But mm -hmm. then, you, but you keep trying, right? And then, then you come up with ideas like Chai TV, which has exploded beyond anything I've ever seen. And you come up with William Murray Golf, and suddenly you're sponsoring the PGA Tour. And it just speaks Incredible. to like, you have awesome, your right? core competency Incredible, with yeah. the Chive, you know, but you got to keep trying to reach out. And be, you still got to be willing to fail. You still got to be willing to try new things mm -hmm. because if you don't evolve, especially in the digital media space, you'll die. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. you know, Eleanor Roosevelt said it herself, you know, a little cleavage never hurt anyone. So, you know, sprinkle some chai that's on top Love of all her. of it. <laughs> you know, send it out on <laughs> trucks like that. And you're going to be just fine. <laughs> I don't think Eleanor Roosevelt said that. She, she didn't, but that's you know, okay. We'll keep it in there and force people to go Roosevelt. look that up on the internet. Hey man, if you're willing to sit down and eat a <laughs> eat a dollar nine burrito it. for the longest time, then who knows? Maybe you'll oh. be playing in a pro am of Bill Murray one day. 
I mean, that's uh, yeah. that's a takeaway, dude. Are you kidding me? No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I got to ask you one question about, because uh, we had Greg Jackson on, who's uh, a legendary MMA coach uh, not long ago, and he mentioned one of the hardest things he deals with is burnout. Um, it's just a constant stream of, of, of training, events. You know, it goes on and on. And in my limited experience, we won't go into that, just uh, understanding a little bit of what it takes to, to be putting out content. Uh, y'all stream content yeah. 24-7 every day. How do you, I mean, is that an issue for you, keeping up with, uh, how do you maintain a motivation there? Keep the pace. Uh, we're all pretty self-motivated people, really. Um, I think uh, you're exactly right. It does happen. I think everyone ebbs and flows. But we're honest. We're a really honest company. We're honest with ourselves and each other. So if someone's fallen behind, we we you know, do something, but it's all about the culture too. Uh, like two days ago, mm -hmm. everyone got to work right. And we, uh, surprised all the employees, uh, like half of them get to go on this duck tour that goes in the water and get hammered all day. And then half of them got to go play paintball all day. And yeah, nice. we just vacated work. No one did shit. Like no one really knew it was coming and That's there was perfect. a lot of work to do and we have responsibilities. We just said, screw it. And our, employees are like, holy shit, you mean I don't have to do any of this work today? Like, the vendors are going to be pissed. And we're like, yeah, the mm. vendors are going to be pissed, huh? Who fucking cares? Here's a gun. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know? No, that's, man, that's the way you do it. You yeah. gotta, you, so it goes oh. back to the culture. Yeah. Like, you're, the thing that wears people down the most is culture. Like, if, you're, if, you, you, know, if you hate your boss, you want to quit your job, right? That's the number one reason people quit their jobs is they hate their boss or they hate the people that they work with. So if, if we hire you and I don't want to have a beer with you or people don't like you at the chive, like you're pretty much on your way out, you mm. know, cause one bad seat can ruin the, can spoil a lot. Mm. So we, we just try to keep the culture where it needs to be and keep everyone accountable, but you try to have fun, you know, that's all you can do. Um, it may not work, but so far we're not burned out, which is after eight years, kind of a miracle. But, uh, I, I, I hear you on that one. I, well, well, let me ask you this. And it kind of seems that one of the deals and what you've created and what y'all created is, is one of the things that it, it'll become a wheel, right? So all the Chivettes, everything, everybody that's there right now, the up and coming generation, they see that. I mean, they see how festive it is and how much fun it is. And they automatically gravitate towards that. So you, you got the, actually the people who were part of it, the community recruiting, not even knowing it just about because of how much fun they're having into that world. And and that's kind of what you were talking about. To keep this thing going, to keep it fluid, you have to see what the younger generation is into and what and what what they're adapting to. It's why I go down to Exos when I'm talking to those combine kids. Every generation, these kids come in and fill out of college, they're different. They are. Man, mm -hmm. they see things differently, they move differently, they talk differently, and that they're but the don't ones. Don't you that, think, Marcus, that like do you, do you, I see a sixteen or eight girl these days and I'm I'm a little bit dumbfounded. I, I don't know what the answer for these kids is. They've got their heads buried in the phone all oh. day long. They mm -hmm. don't have their eyes up to the world. I'm like, holy shit. I don't know what's going to happen. Are these kids going to be on the chive? I don't know. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Being successful and what what you did to be successful, Marcus, and what, what, you know, what both of you did, I mean, the amount of hard work that you have to put into being successful, like I didn't trip and fall into a global phenomenon at the chive. Like behind wow. all of this fun uh, and the veil that is uh, this great illusion that we've created is like, is some of the hardest working people you'll ever meet in your life. You know, you know, there's sure. a, like how many people make it through buds? How many less people from that generation are going to make it through buds? You know, are they going to have to scale down buds great on a curve? So buds is going to be on a curve this year, guys, because we know y'all a bunch of pussies now. <laughs> like, well, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. you t I don't know. I interview some of these kids coming out of uh, college right now, and I'm, they, you know, they won't come with a resume, and uh, just a resume, man. And so I, I, this happened yesterday. Someone came in. I was like, "Yeah, wow. can I have your resume?" And she was like, "Well, I, I didn't bring my resume." And I was like, "You know, I'm gonna ask you to leave right now because you didn't bring your resume." And she's like, "Well, you know, I sent it to you online, so you already have it." Oh, god! Um. But you know, there's some kids. There's uh, the ones that do work hard are going to be get get upstream a little faster, I think. No, At least I that, hope. that is my plan with my kids. I'm like, hey, guess what, guys? You're going to have an 
inside lane because I am going to train you like the like the old days. Any kid, any kid who has that training is going to get ahead so much easier than we did. I, I truly believe that. Like all you got to do is instill those core values, and you're gonna you're gonna get upstream so much faster than any other kid out there because they're uh, you know they're being lazy. You know, though, we're talking globally. The competition now is global. It's not just who's in your town, in your state, necessarily in mm-hmm. your country. You're talking about global competition, and this is a much bigger question, but if you look at the phases of you know, civilization and on the back end of any kind of <clears throat> empire or great society is a period of decadence and decline, that, you know, that might be what we're looking at here in that elsewhere in the country, or not elsewhere in the country, somewhere else in the world, you know, there's, there's cultures that are rising, that are working hard, that happened. are building themselves yeah, in the happened. same manner that the United States uh, rose to prominence, and they're eventually going to, well, eat, eat our lunch. We are the new Rome. I <laughs> track it all the way up. It's, it's when, we get, when we get soft on ourselves. Yeah, it, it comes that, that, you know, that's when it comes down to being something that the kids don't understand, and that's just being a citizen. You know, you got to be a citizen first. Like, you got to look at yourself and think, am I a citizen of the United States? You know? And what do you what mean does by it citizen? mean to be able to what, call what that, yourself a citizen? And that means, you know, personal accountability. And we do that at work every day. Amen. Hopefully we do it when we get home. You know, the chive is, the mantra of the chive is making the world 10% happier, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we mean that in everything that we do. Like, we're degenerates and idiots. I get that. And maybe we're too stupid to know when to stop. But we're Probably. also trying to be a little bit better every single day because you have to be a citizen first. And I, mm. I, I don't know many parents, even some of the good parents don't teach. I know Marcus definitely does, but I, I was taught that. My dad was like, you're a citizen. Do you know what that means? Mm. And I remember sitting there going, you know, I was 13 and I was like, no, but teach me, you know, and, and how fascinating is it? It's these simple constructs that are getting abandoned right now that, that we need to get back to. Well, if you ask yourself, if every American mm. were like me, where would America be? I mean, we had that in the teams. Exactly. If, if every team guy were like me, yeah. where would the teams be? And I, I mean, I used to write that in my book every day. It's on the cover. I mean, it's the first thing you kind of look at. I, pull your weight. I mean, you're blessed to be born here. Yeah. And what you get in this country, like we talked the other day, is choice. I mean, you boil it all the way down. You have a choice to do anything you want and go in any direction you want, whether you follow the direction of somebody yeah. else or you follow Regardless your heart. of your circumstance. Yeah. But I mean, do you, pull your weight. What have you done to, to give to everybody that, that lives here? That's a great point, John. You're exactly right. If you're, if you're trying to be, you know, even if you're, if you're here on a, on a green card, you're trying to become an American. You, they want to know if you pay your taxes. I don't know. I just think uh, being a, uh, your kids are going to be golden. Uh, in fact, I, I welcome our tiny overlords already, you know, because your kids are going to rule the world. And if I have any kids out there, I'm sure they're going to show up at my door asking for money any minute. I don't know. I'm sure they're out there. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? I think we got a couple interesting points of advice. We always like to end our show with some points of advice from our guest. If you have anything else to pass on to this next generation or, or whoever that's out there listening. Um, Lay it on us. Fire it away. Uh, I think we've been talking about it the whole time. You, you've got to you don't have to know what you want right now. I think we, we, we try to give these kids a pathway to, you know, some parents are like, hey, you know, what's your plan B? I know you want to be an actor, but, you know, let's get that accounting background. But eventually you got you to gotta zero in on what you want to do. And uh, if, if you're lucky enough to know what you want to do, and some people aren't, you know, some people do flop around into their 30s, and I, that's okay too. But once you figure out what your true passion is, what you want to do, you got to take dead aim. <laughs> you know, you really mm. got to zero in on the target and say, okay, what's it going to take to get me there? Who do I have to meet? What do I have to learn? What new knowledge base do I need to get me to where my passion is? And I, and I can really only speak to those who, who have that because I, I certainly do. And I feel for the people who never find their their vocation, their path. And I, I, I don't know what to tell them. Um, hopefully you have very rich parents, but like, <laughs> you know, if not, 
the amount of hard work that it takes to get you to where you, you need to be is something, um, it's a Herculean effort. You know, it's going to take a little bit of being selfish. And I hate mm -hmm. to say that, but there, uh, you know, if you're 23 and you know exactly what you want to do and you're spending 50% of the time with your girlfriend and that's, you know, and you can't get away from that. I got some bad news. There's a kid out there who's going to outwork you and he's coming hard and fast, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it is a competition. Exactly. It's never not going to be a competition. I, I don't know how to, how to explain away things other than you're going to have to earn it, you know? Sure. But everything, everything we have came from earning it. No one ever gave me anything because we didn't come from any money. To this day, no one has given me anything because we've never sold the company. Every ounce of my life has been summed up in, you know, I eat what I kill, period. Like yep. every day I go out, mm -hmm. I sell this many t-shirts, this many ad units, whatever it takes, I eat what I kill. And if I don't, if I, you know, if I don't kill it, then you're going to go hungry. So and it, it's a tough climate out there in digital media. So, oh, yeah. you know, that's a grim picture. The other thing is, you know, just oh, make sure whatever you pick, you like it. Make sure you enjoy doing it because you'll burn out if you don't. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Yeah, follow uh, what you love, man. It, it, even if you don't know what you want to do at a young age, you know you want to do something. And it, for those of you who don't have the family out there, the, the background, that's what your friends are for. I mean, your friends right. see stuff in you, and if, I mean, that you can't. And don't be afraid to, like he said, make those uh, course adjustments. You can ride, ride for a little bit, and you'll figure out this ain't where I need to be. You take what you learn from it and move in, in the direction you want to go, man. You got plenty of time. Everybody's in such a damn hurry, man. You got plenty of time and just to build your life, not jump straight to it because you jump straight to it. It can be taken away from you. Absolutely. You and be careful. It. The friends you pick too. the, the friends you pick, they, they'll, they'll hold you down if, if it's the wrong group. Sure. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I like to, for Marcus, I've always liked that you're all about friendship. We'll be friends forever because of that. <laughs> oh my God. That's all I you got, know? man. All like I no, nobody knows. No, nobody has checked in on my broken leg more than Marcus will try. Like, this is how good this guy is. He doesn't oh, want no, anyone to try to cut this out. I, I never checked. That is so, see, see, I told you he'd say that. Stop, stop doing that, Marcus. You're doing the Marcus thing right now. Oh, shucks. I didn't do shit. No, no. Marcus Luttrell has texted me more than anybody checking in on my situation since I broke my leg. I mean, that is the fabric of character that Marcus Luttrell is. And that's a good friend. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're my that. friend. I don't... <laughs> See there, I got, I got him to do it. He can't take compliments. It just shuts him right up. Yeah, I don't know what to say <laughs> now. You got me off. <laughs> well, I tell you, I tell you what, man. This has been this has been a really interesting conversation. It's been entertaining, and we're really glad that uh, we got the chance to do this. We've run much longer than we expected because I think it was just flowing right through. So yeah, thanks, brother. Thanks for getting on here, man. Tell everybody we said hello, and and uh, I will, man. Uh, tell Mel I said hi, Wizard. Thanks for hopping on. You did great. <laughs> I, I, uh, Mel's right here. Yeah, she's she right here. here. She says it. hello. Sends her love. Marcus, uh, I'll see you for dinner next week or the week after. Bye, right, brother. I'll take care of yourself. Thanks again, guys. That I, was. I, I get along with that guy. Like he's, that was. <laughs> that was a really entertaining inter, uh, sure. discussion, wasn't it? Some of the guests you get on, and, and you, sometimes our humor can fly right either over their head or under their head. Mm hmm. When you're trying to be serious, right. and you got you got a guy you try to be serious with, and he's he throws the humor at you. Yep, I think we got a good balance though out of that. Sure. You know, initially, just the nature of the chive. I th I think his whole attitude is being a. Uh, I think he's a serious guy that just knows how to again balance. Yeah, loves life. Balance right? that yeah, seriousness sure. with enjoying enjoying life. Well, man, when you chase yeah. your dream long enough, and they've had those struggles and those hard times, and once you Kind of like when we got our tridents. Mm -hmm. Remember that feeling, man? I mean, I still stare at that thing. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? And I mean... You don't forget it, that. And when you do it, the biggest thing is when we were with our buddies, and that's that's the accomplishment, him and his family, and, and looking back on where they were and where they are now is, uh, is, is something. Definitely seems like he has a recipe that's just going to... He's going to be able to sustain. Feeds itself. He's going to be able to sustain this because, sure. again, he's got that balance. He's He's got good fundamentals you know, in his approach and all that, but it's clear that he's enjoying this, right? 
is enjoying it. So it keeps it fresh. And, and, and following that passion, uh, that's something you can't un- underestimate. And he talked about that a lot too, you know, figure out, because that can be one of the hardest questions to figure out in life. That's, is, that's the question. What are you passionate about? What do you want to do? What are you here and for? Unfortunately, I think right? a lot of people out there, they don't see that through to the end. And they, somewhere along the line, they settle for what's easy uh, or what they feel like they're expected to do. Um, but what he's saying is... Yeah, absolutely. That's... That's absolutely Hold that right. line until you got it figured out, and you're gonna fly a lot higher following something you love. Let it unfold in front of you. Yeah, right. Don't gonna, don't automatically jump to to what's already there because we do that, right? And he, humans, like you said, man, we'll settle and like, oh, you know, I'm, I know where I want to go, but I got to this point which I never thought I'd get here, and I'm here now. So why don't I just stop? Because everything's everything. Mm-hmm. Well, what about what you were what you were going after? Keep going, man. Keep. That's what life's about is keep going. And you're right. The hardest question, I mean, we all ask ourselves, like, why am, what's my purpose, man? Why am I here? What am I trying to do? Am I supposed to just fit in here, my cog on a wheel? Or am I going to get out here and drive this thing? Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and don't confuse the easy road with the fun and enjoyable road. Those are two totally different things. You can be on a road that you love and enjoy, but it is the most difficult work you have ever done. And you can also be on the easy path where you don't have to put a lot of work in, but you hate what you're doing. I think you're on the wrong, you're on the wrong and I path. I think sometimes people will say, they'll confuse that easy road with the fun road. They think, well, those two have to go together. That is completely false, right? Yeah, you're supposed to be having that having I mean, fun in that I mean, look at the teams. Look at the blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> we put into that. Uh, but at the same time, what an incredible experience. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, make no mistake, People for one second that there are times we're out there, and man, this sucks so bad. I would quit if I could get out of here. You know what I'm talking? about? Oh, absolutely. If, if there's a way I could get oh, out of here God, and leave right I now, mean, coming from you, I, I would just. <laughs> I'll never. We had an op in Afghanistan, man, and we inserted zero dark thirty, and the rear security was still on the insertion point. This is how bad this terrain was, and we had. A, there was a master chief, man. He was. He's a badass dude. He goes, "This sucks so bad." He's like, "I would quit," but the helicopter's gone. It was it was that bad, and it's it's in mm-hmm. those situations afterwards. We were laughing and cutting up, wrote a song about it, and everything. And you remember those times? I mean, this was so brutal. The only way I would have made it through that is because you had everybody around you. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. And that's another good, good thing that I mean, he got into that was the culture, developing that culture, the culture they have at the Chive. Um, in my mind, that that sounds a lot like the team you've got around you, right? Which is teamwork. Uh, Getting the support from the team, having that, and developing that culture and attitude, well, you know, within it. You know what? He has the, the ear of the people. He's kind of a man of the people. He gets in there. Well, you've and, got twenty th- million visitors a month. Yeah, you've got some influence. I'd say right? so. Right. I'd say I, I'd say so. I mean, that's that. I mean, you, you're talking about this many people. He's doing something right. If that many people are grabbing tape towards what he's doing, I mean, he has obviously found his reason for being here, man. I, hell, I just you know, blessed to be in his life and be a part of that. And just to see that that's, that's the honor. I get a kick out of people who are real successful like that and watch them drive. It's, it's uh man, it's motivating to me. So Dave, John, man, thanks for coming on here and sharing all that. Absolutely. Hey, uh, one thing we want to do is before we sign off of here, that was a really entertaining interview, but we're going to kind of, I don't want to bring it down. Oh, but you got, you got one. I'm going to bring, we're gonna bring the tone down for a minute to read this reader story, you know, because these go things one? are, yeah. I love this part of the show. Yeah. This has always been one of my favorite parts of the show. It really connects with everybody that's listening out there. So this one comes from, uh, from Ryan Schaff. My name is Ryan, and this is the start of my journey. I'm an Air Force vet, but my time was nothing of valor, just simply doing my job. I never deployed and only shot a gun once a year during quals. After getting out, I was involved in a motorcycle accident that put me in the hospital for over a month and took me around five surgeries to get myself back together. During that month, they kept me hopped up on Percocets and a morphine drip. And even after I got out, I was getting bottles of drugs handed to me. Shortly out of the hospital, I knew these pills were bad for my body. I decided to quit taking them that day, but later that night, I felt like I was going to die. I popped another Percocet, and all the pain and terror instantly went away. Uh Uh-oh, I thought. My body is hooked. From then on, I chased that feeling of death away by staying on the pills. Eventually my, subscri- eventually, my prescription wore out, and I turned to buying the pills on the street. And when the pills weren't enough, I turned to the darker side, and that's when I got into heroin. 
Overall, this downward slope took about two years. I'm not someone you would ever expect to have this issue. I'm successful with a great job and wonderful family. No one in the world knows about my problem except for my supplier. And I'm able to hide it from my wife because I have a good job. She doesn't even notice the four to $600 a month missing from the bank account. But for the last six months, I've been tearing myself apart about being this person that I've become. Recently, I've read a ton of military books. Literally, I've read every SEAL and Afghan Iraq war book published in the past 10 years. Reading these stories, these great men who I wish I would have followed in their footsteps only make me feel worse for being such a piece of shit and allowing myself to go down this road. About three weeks ago, I found you guys' podcast and binged on almost every episode. I decided this is it. Because of you guys and these stories, I'm fed up and I'm done with these damn drugs. I don't care how bad it gets. You guys and your guests are my inspiration. What I'm facing is nothing compared to what a lot of you have faced. So I'm only writing this because in my mind, I'm giving Marcus Luttrell my word that I'm done with this crap. And come hell or high water, I would not want to let someone like him down. I'll write you guys with my progress. Thank you. I promise I will quit these drugs, but I will never quit the road to sobriety. Wow. So he's living out his never quit story right now. Oh yeah, he's. That's yeah. You, he's you're right, right man. When it, when you said the, uh, his subscription ran out to those pills, it's one of them deals where it, you, you you get on them, and mm. you're right, brother. I it sucks, but you can get through it, man. That that, that that's all there is to it. Once you tell yourself in your mind that you can get through it, it, it it's over because that's what the the drug is taking a hold, a hold of is your mind. Mm -hmm. You thinking you got man? There, there can't be anything worse than this. This 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 is worse than the pain I'm in. So. Yeah, I know this is it's a serious issue facing uh, facing our veterans out there today. I we both personally have a lot of friends who, oh man, have been at least. It's one of those. Well, our guy. Here's the problem: is we keep going back in with the guys are still injured. Really, it's just a matter of staying on the line and, or anything you can do to stay in it. And uh, those pills don't care about that. Yeah, like it, it being a product of what you're trying to accomplish is something good. You're trying to get back online. You're yeah. trying to get. Yeah, because on the other part side of your gear pain, issue, man. so it's that you can get back issue. and operate and you can be a positive force. You can get back to what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. But sometimes it's so powerful that you get hooked into that. Well, it's the wrong way to do it. You think it's the right way, but it's completely yeah. opposite. It's the it's absolute wrong way. And then the, that rabbit hole goes to damn deep, leads to hell. Yeah, we've, I think we both know people who, uh, some of them are still trying to find their way out of that. Well, here, here's the deal. You, you can't, you, they can go to therapy and all that stuff, but they have to want to get off of them. I mean, you got to want to be, a, and he does. He said, he just said it right well, there, man. Right and to here. write that in, that, that, that's powerful. I mean, he's committed to doing it. And then the biggest resource you ever needed was yourself. And you figured that out. So come on, down the roll. Awesome. Well, you know what? It was a, uh, thanks for writing in with that, Ryan. And very interesting interview, right? Oh. I want to thank him again for coming on our show, being part of that. What an interesting combination of an entertaining show, but with a foundation of some, some truly actionable advice. Man, everything we do here, everything we're trying to tell you is, is built off of pretty much one thing. He just threw that out there line by line. Yeah. So let's wrap this up, man. What are you, uh, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for the friends that I have, like him and, and you, man, and everybody who comes back here and keeps listening to us and... Uh, allowing us to bring these amazing people out here and, and, and talk about the story. Thank you so much. And to the wife, my family, I love you guys. I'm out. I'm out.